Well guys, hope you're all well. Um, I had this turn up in a post this morning. Um, I know what it's in there, but I don't know if you guys will. It's kind of something very rare. Um, I can give you a clue. It was sent to me by Anthony, who is an eBay store, Kosho Spares. He's uh, been very good to me in the past getting me sorting out gears and stuff like that for my FWO 3s and 4s and 5s. But, shall we open the box and see what we've got in it? Now this came this morning. I've not opened it because I've been tidying up my room to try and make a bit of space for this. I did bid on one uh, a couple of weeks ago. I went up to like, I think it was 600 euros or whatever it was, and it was the highest bid for ages, but you know, in the last sort of dying millisecond, whatever it was, I got out bid. Um, and that was like a brand new one. But this isn't, this is second hand. Um, I had to really try and get it off of Tony, you know, sort of butter him up a little bit because he didn't want to sell it. Well, he had no plans to sell it, but um, he's, he had that, like we all do, and we find time, we're going to do it up and we're going to make something out of it. But I sort of pestered him a, a fair bit, you know, trying to be tactful, and uh, he agreed to sell it to me. So this is the first time I've seen it, uh, as you can see, packed it very well, but you know, I'd sooner have that than like my pro boat which come to me and a load of bits and pieces all broken, uh, which hopefully will be repaired one day. Oh, so, are we getting there? Let's see, probably a lot of boxes inside. Uh, right. Now, it looks like I've got another box in here. This one, hang on. Oh, I, can't, I can't show you this box because it might give the game away. So, does anyone guess what it could be? Maybe I'll just show you a little glimpse. Does anyone know what it is? It's from about 2004, I believe. 2002, not very many made, uh, I think that was a bit like Marmite, you know, so let's try and get these, oh, hope you didn't see that, I've just seen the body shell, which is Seen better days, as you can imagine. Well, there's there's one wheel. I won't show you the other side, but that is one one wheel. Now, I've got a spare set of wheels for this because um, the ones on there are a little bit worn, but. These, one of these has been glued on the wrong way and one hasn't got a foam in it, apparently. Whether that come from the Coro show like that back in the day, who knows, but that's one of the wheels. Oh. This is firsty work. I've not even started yet. Right. Oh, I have a manual. Can you all read Japanese? Well, that's the manual for the car. Oh, it's done it. Brilliant. Brilliant packaging. Absolutely brilliant. I'm going to run over by a tractor and it'll still be okay. Some small parts. Oh, 
Ah, wicked. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, guys. I'm sure if you're a Kosho fan that like I am from many, many years ago, you know what this is. I can't wait to get this out of the box. Uh, some more wheels and tyres. to the bottom of the box. <laughs> Brilliant. I don't want to go any flyers. Oh. oh dear. Well. There she is, guys. Do you know what it is? Yes. It's a Kosho first name Giga Crusher. And I think after that they were called um, a dual force because it's got a little trick up its sleeve. Well, let's have a look at the body. I'm going to have to find something to undo the entire rats with. You can tell I didn't have this out of the box. I thought of it because it was packed in there so tight I thought, oh, if it's got them spare wheels it'll be pressing. The, the body's really fragile on it. But I don't suppose I'll find another one then for a lot more money, but you never know. I didn't expect to find one of these. Right. So now you can see why it's a little bit special. Yes, it's got twin 26 engines. Now, uh, I had a uh, Kosho Mad Force many years ago, and you know, it was a a great idea. Oh, look at these wheels. They're not brand new. Superb. Um, yeah, around about this time, they brought out Kosho uh, Mad Force, which was a three speed transmission. It's a solid axle truck, and I believe it had a 26 in it, but um, it handled like a shed, you know. I mean, it, I've got the Chassis on my my L four hundred, my Mojave. Where I put the L four hundred in, um, I've got half a. Well, it's got Kosho Mad Force axles, and it's got an extended Mad Force chassis. Um, you know, but I don't really intend to sort of jump that. That's purely, you know, for, uh, to show off the engine. Um, but I've seen these go, uh, and they go reasonably well. Uh, again. It's got a three-speed gearbox, which is, I think it's up there. I believe the gearbox is up there, well, one of the ends. But it's got one of their, um, like, the quick-drive sort of reverse gearbox in it. Let's see if I can get it off of these. Where's my knife? This might take some time. But, you know, I'm thankful for Tony for doing this because I've had things damaged in the post and this is quite a rare thing. Like I say, the one I was bidding on was kind of like new, but it had a different sort of engines in it. I don't know what they were. I think, I don't think they were Kosho engines, but he said that it had never been run. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll get his blade back a little bit. Okay, we get in there. Well, that's the front of. Let's have a go at the back, shall we? I thought it was sitting low. But, you know, it's a nice job. I mean, the, the boat I had sent to me disappeared for like, I think it was two months. Uh, and it turned up back at the the, uh, the cellar. I think that was Holmes. Um, and they actually broke it. It was all damaged. Sorry if my head's getting in the video. 
Okay, I want to break free. <sighs> okay, so, let's just try and take a few more of these turrets off. Now, this is one of the ends. Mufflers, oh, it goes on there like that. And Tony said to me, he said, oh, I've just got back from posting it and I found the rear muffler on the floor where he packed it. So I'm missing one of them, but he's got it and he said he'll send it to me or when I do an order, because I'm obviously going to order some parts for this, um, if he's got them, you know, but screw sets, because what I intend to do to restore it kind of exactly how it was, I'm not putting any other engine in it. It's just going to be as it is. Right. Yeah, no, no, um, no toy's going to go in here. This is the last one. Uh, Right, let's get back to what we've got here, so I can have a look under the other side. Okay, so I guess, I think this is the quick drive gearbox and a three speed transmission. I can't see inside, I've got the instructions and I've had a look through them. It's got a slipper in there. Which is probably quite good with the uh, the two motors, um, and I know it's a three speed. It's got high tech servos in it, quite quite powerful ones, are quite good. Um, yeah, it's got sort of standard kind of crochet axles, but I believe that the three speed could be in the front here because you've got your two engines, they're both sort of going opposite, counterclockwise. So, where are we going? Yeah, counterclockwise. So that's gonna turn the bevel gear under this, I mean, this air filter, which I love about this thing, this is the air filter, the proper, like a ram air filter. So it goes through these tubes here, I believe there's a foam or something in there, so it goes through there. So it sucks air actually through this ram air um, and into the engines. Now, these are quite awkward to set up um, because you've got to try and sync both engines together to get them, get them kind of spot on each engine. So the way I'm going to try and do it is to like run engine at a time, get that running right, and then try and sort the other one out to get it the same kind of RPM, stuff like that. Try and get myself a, a little red counter, you know, a little taco of some sort. But, um, yeah, overall, it looks like really nice. I know you said it had a new, Tony said a new fuel tank on it. Uh, yeah, it's got a new tank. Um, I guess it's on 27 meg, I don't know. I've not looked inside of the radio. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's all there. I mean, Koshan made some good stuff back in the day, didn't they? I mean, look at that. You know, we've got three speed gearbox, forward and reverse, disc brake. Um, we've got like eight coil over shocks. Uh, you know, when you think what they make now is kind of like, ready to run stuff out of the box and you know, no one wants to build anything or play with anything saying that this was obviously i think it was a ready to run i can't remember now but i can't see any signs of anything actually being broken um there's a cover that tony took off that goes over here which covers the transmission but you know that's nice it got a nice sort of like heat sink kind of cover on there um, on the mad force, the gearbox was like the three speed was actually uh, chain driven. So I believe I can see 
can see something rotating in there. So I would think uh, that the free speed is in there. I mean, I'll tell you what, I've got a manual here. Let's have a look, shall I? Let's, let's, let's kind of do this because we're, I'm only guessing. Um, but yeah, I've, you know, got quite a nice manual there. But if you look at this one, it's got SF, ready set. Now the SF stands for a single force. So obviously it only had one engine, but the running gear and everything is the same. So this will be the same manual apart from, it'll only have one engine in here apart from the two. But I mean, you couldn't run this with one engine, could you? I couldn't. I mean, it's made for two. Got two of everything, two tanks, two engines, you know, that's what you want. Especially if you're a bit of a petrol head like me. So let's see if I can find exploded view in here. I mean, we've got... Uh, I mean, we've got quite a lot of bits to play with. And it's got all part numbers, which is fantastic. Ah, uh, here we go. Yes. So this is the three-speed transmission. So that is actually in the front. And I mean, this differential where are we this little differential here is so similar to uh, what car did I have I think it's like the um, the quick drive beetle not quick drive what they call it the one that had reverse I've got one with a four stroke in it I hope that's man enough I mean it's like <laughs> you've got a lot of power going through that and I believe it only had those like aluminium gears in there but no doubt you can buy other gears but that is very similar and it's similar to the FWO3. I believe they have the same gearboxes, but you know. So here we've got the three speed. Um, it looks like it's driven by a shaft, sort of coming from the engines. And if we go back here, now this is a clever little piece of kit. Um, I've got one in there, say a four stroke Kosha Beetle. And, oh, QRC, that's it, that's what I was looking for. Not quick drive, it's QRC. I was probably all out of focus, but that's a QRC gearbox, and it's put in a lot of things, and it works very well. And what you can do, which I've done on mine, was if you have a three-position switch on your transmitter, you can have forward and reverse, and in the middle, you can have, like, neutral. So you can have it sitting there, revving, and not moving, and you click it in the forward, and off it goes. And my little beetle... That's got a two-speed in it, and uh, it runs lovely. But, uh, yeah, so now we know where everything is. That three-speed. I should imagine it looks like it's driven by... Um, is a shaft from the engine? Oh, no, we've got the three. Oh, I can see what it is, yeah. So we've got a three-speed clutch spell. Can you see that there? So we've got a three-speed clutch spell runs directly onto the three speed um, there, onto those gears. So no chain, nothing like that. It looks quite sort of bulletproof. Um, I'm just sort of worried about those, there's the rear, those little um, differentials, because they look just like the ones on the FWO3, which didn't have a lot of power going for them. But, you know, I've not heard a lot of bad things about the diffs or anything like that, you know, and I've seen a few of them run, and, they sound awesome when they change into like from first to second and third. Um, they change, then you know, sound awesome. A bit like my um, L four hundred um, Harvey, uh, which could do with another gear. This this is looking like I could use something like this on the Mojave um, if I can find you know another one of those gearboxes and just run it straight on you know how it is now. So um, yeah, that's uh, quite good having that exploded view and it's so clean. I'll have to look after that, put it in a plastic case or something. So let's go back to the truck. It's got that familiar smell like it's been in a shed or a loft or something like that. Um, you know, like I've had so much stuff come to me like that, but the shocks are not leaking. Uh, all the transmission seems fine. Let's just see what radio was in it at the time. Now, I have not touched these engines. Uh, I've not touched them and I said to uh, Anthony I said whatever you do don't try and free the engines up don't turn them over I'll do all that myself because obviously um, 
all old engines, um, if you even if you put after running them, um, and I'm not sure if Anthony did put after running these or not. Um, but yeah, they're both locked up solid, so I wouldn't think uh, there was after run in there. I don't know, but if you try and turn these over now, you would do so much damage to the engine. So. If any of you guys out there are buying something uh, old, second hand, like I do, and you want to restore it and all that, do not try and sort of, I've seen people put WD-40 down them and try and pull them over and all that thing. You will absolutely ruin the piston aligner, and they're not cheap. Um, you know, you're looking at a lot of money for piston aligner. And what it normally is, is the rust in the engine. If you don't put an inhibitor in there of rust, or you don't put after run in there, uh, and you don't run it right out of fuel. You know, the best way to look after a nitro engine is when you finish running it, just keep running it out of fuel and just keep trying to turn it over with a glow start on until it stops firing. So there's no fuel in the case. Do it to both engines. Do not have any fuel left in the case. And then I don't use WD-40, a lot of people do, but I've had that before and the engines have locked up again. So I just use a two-stroke oil a uh, high grade what well, I put in my Aprilia um, it's Putaline uh, MX9 uh, and I, after I finish running I run it all out of um, fuel and I put you know I almost fill the engines up with after run if you, if you know you're not going to run it for a couple of months the only way to save your engine is to put a lot of after run in it turn it over a few times get it all spread around and, and that's it so I'm not fussed about these engines being uh, locked up solid because it's not a big deal. All you have to do is strip the engine down. If you want to do this properly and not ruin them, uh, like I said to say, do not turn them over, you know, just leave it because he was going to free them up for me, which was, you know, okay. But I did say to him, no, I'll just, just leave them because they do considerable damage to the engine. So, because what happens is with a two stroke, you know, the fuel comes in through the crankcase and it goes up the board. Now, if you've got like really rusty bearings, um, what happens is, is their chrome comes off the bearings and it gets sucked up inside and it ruins the piston aligner. Can you imagine hard chrome going up and down in the liner? And you will destroy your piston and bore fit because they're ABC. You will destroy that within like 10 seconds and the engine will be toast. So if you spend some time, take each engine apart or whatever you've got, take it apart um bit by bit and then look at the bearings they'll be red rusty that's on no they will be on this and then you warmly take it all apart so you've got no crank in it or nothing like that uh, all the head off back off carbs off everything just the bare crankcase with the bearings in then all you've got to do is warm the casing up slightly either do it with a heat gun or a blow lamp of some sort some people put them in the oven and you just give a little tap and both the bearings will just drop out lovely. And then buy yourself a new set of bearings. Uh, I go to a, one of my bearing stockists uh, and I try and buy the best bearings you can get in there. Some people are putting stainless steel ones in there. Now I've had some luck with them. Uh, you know, you think it's going to cure the, the rusting problem. Um, but some of the stainless steel ones, and the bearings are not that hard. Uh, but saying that, I did have one in my, what plane was it I was flying? I had a seaplane, that's right. Uh, was, it, was it an old Thunder Tiger plastic thing? But it was ideal for a seaplane. Uh, and I changed the, engine, the bearings in that because it was a seaplane. And I put, I think it was an SC60. And I put um, stainless steel bearings in that and it was perfect. And yet I put them in a Sato 100 in my Aquawatt when I was flying. And it started to run rough and it got really notchy and the bearings kind of started to disintegrate. Um, so I didn't sort of use them. But I think what I'll do is I'll have a look at these. I mean, obviously, you know, they're going to be jammed up and rusty. But you just warm them up, get the bearings out, and you do the reverse when you want to put the bearings up. So just warm the coating up, the bearings just drop in, just let it cool down. I use a crankshaft to line it up, push the front one in, just let it cool on its own. Oil everything up and then rebuild your engine again. Don't try and sort of put any sandpaper or emery cloth or anything down the liners to try and clean them up or anything. You know, you've just got to use uh, like a, a carb cleaner, something pretty strong.
But normally the boys are okay. It's just the, I mean, I, I don't know how long this has been left. It's obviously quite a while. But it's, um, it's, you must not turn them engines over. When they're jammed like that, do not try to put penetrating oil or anything down like that. You've got to take them apart, you know, every little part, get the bearings out, get them changed, put them back, clean every part up, and then go right through the engine, the carburetors got all come apart, you've got to clean all the jets out uh, and stuff like that. But that's all part of it, you know. I mean, if you tried to pull them engines over, or if Tony had done it, they would have been kind of quite damaged. Um, as it is now, I'm really happy because Tony said last time it was running, it was really good. So I'm just hoping the piston aligners are okay, and it's just the bearings that I've got to change, because I'll be, you know more than happy if it's just that so let's just see what sort of radio we had in it i'll tell you this suspension is beautiful they've got much better shocks than the uh, mad force okay i've got two clips on here yeah aha receiver's not in there that's okay not a problem i'll run it on 2.4 you know um, I believe this my anodized part here is not standard. I think they, I believe they had like a, um, uh, I think it was a plastic sort of roll cage. So this might be, obviously it's blue, uh, must be Kyosho. So I would think that that is an option part on there, um, which is probably a, a good thing to protect the engines, you know. It looks like it's been run without the, because uh, these do monster wheelies, you know, like through the first and second gears. Um, but yeah, how many servos have we got? We've probably got three because we've got, yeah, the gear change. So I believe this one is, it could be up to the gear change. This one's forward and, re this one's a brake. Uh, this one's forward and reverse. Yeah, forward and reverse. This one's a brake. And I think we've got another one. Yeah, another one up there, which probably does the steering, I believe. It goes up to here. Oh, no, we've got another one up there. So this must be something to do with the uh, the gear change or something like that. And we've got uh, a nice serve up there. I think it's quite what we've got in there. Uh, it's high tech HS six four five metal geared. So I believe back in the day that was one of the, you know, a really good uh, powerful servo. But, you know, there's so many more out there now. I can change them all, but uh, I'm kind of itching to get into this build now. Um, but I've got a few other projects. I'm doing another project at the moment. Um, which I shall try and show you. Now I've got my table out, once again, because my garage dish is a mess. It needs so much tidying up. I've really got to get back to uh, tidying my garage up. But this other project has been taking me uh, a couple of weeks, not too bad, but it's something that I've built before and I've sold it and I regretted selling it. So I bought another engine uh, and I'm building another one now. But I'm building it slightly different, trying to change a few things on it, make it a little bit simple. Um, some things have worked out better, and some things have worked out a bit of a nightmare. But I'll try and do another video on that. Um, uh, but, you know, I've got... This is going to take me some time. Uh, I shall try and do little videos on rebuilding the engines, uh, looking at the transmission, and some of the history of this car, because they didn't make them for very long. Some guys loved them, some didn't. I can't remember what the price was. I believe they was, it's when Kaijo was going over to these ready sets and stuff like that. But this looks a much better quality to me than the, uh, the Mad Force. Uh, Mad Force had like solid axles, which is not good for handling. They, you know, they, they sort of swung from here they come to go down to there and you've got like a swinging axle that goes kind of like that but the thing is when it goes up it drags the axle one way so it's doing so it's trying to steer itself all the time so when you get up to speed 
the old truck gets really wobbly. It's not so bad in my Tyrone 400, but when you add like a, a little truck with a, a 26, you know, revving its head off in there, um, and it sort of did like 40 mile an hour, it was really hard to keep in a straight line and it just wouldn't jump, it wouldn't do anything. But this, you know, this is quite nice now because we've got independent suspension. Uh, it all looks kind of, it looks like we've got hubs on the back so you can adjust the towing. Where are you? So we've got these metal pieces on here and I believe that kind of you've got a knuckle in there. I'd imagine it's very similar to the front uh, like Kosho used to do. And I probably can adjust the uh, the towing on the back um, and the front. I mean, these tyres don't look bad really, but you know, I can't see any perishing on them really. Um, but I mean, it's crying out for those tyres to be painted, isn't it? I think yellow or white. I've got to paint that car showing. Um, I like doing that. Some people don't, but I quite like doing that. I've actually got another little radio box there, but I should imagine that's empty. Uh, but yeah, I'm over the moon with it. All the plastics look good. I mean, what are the wishbones? We've got, yeah, a bit of wear on a bumper, which is, you know, you're going to get there. A little bit on that. Uh, rear wishbones look, oh, they've got a little, little mark on there. Uh, we've got... Uh, yeah, a few, few marks on there to be expected, you know, when you think how old this car was. Um, and everyone treated them, you know, like, thought we can jump it over and all that kind of thing. Um, I'm only going to use it as a gentle runner. I, I just think it's something, like, rare and special. And it just looks like a, a lump. I mean, when you... Certain angles of it, I think it just looks awesome. You know, it... And when I get the other, I mean, I might make some alley ones of these, you know. Uh, make some polished alley ones, slightly different, I don't know yet. But we've got the old uh, screw together. Uh, exhaust on there, silencers, or trim pipes, or whatever you, you want to call them. We've got, uh, yeah, got to line them up. I've seen a guy on YouTube, he was pretty wicked, he actually, I mean, let's have a look at the body, shall we? Right, now you know, it doesn't look, let's move this beast over here, it doesn't look too bad, uh, but we've got damage up here, you can see that it's a crack going right through there, um, and we've got a crack going through the bed, right now, I've had a lot worse than that. Um, so I'm quite happy with that as well. And all the decals are quite good. Um, that should clean up really nice. Um, you can see it's had bits stored on top of it where it's got a few scratches on it. It could have been how that broke. If you, you, you know, you store cars sometimes, you pile them on top of each other. Uh, that can happen to it. Or, you know, and there's a little light, little black light cover missing off of there. Whether that would be in my in the box somewhere, where I, where I oh, we'll go, yeah, there's a little cover missing off of there, no big deal. Um, but I see a guy on YouTube, uh, and it made a, a lovely job of this truck. And this rear, this rear bed here, he didn't paint that; he left that clear, so you could see all the back. And uh, it painted like the exhaust on the back here. Uh, it painted them sort of like red, uh, and you could see them through the back and it looked absolutely awesome so you you can see these pipes through the back you know i'm gonna give these a really good polish up because they will come up okay um but yeah like i say i'm very happy with it there's no broken parts in it uh the first thing i'm gonna do is strip it down to every nut and bolt put it in uh tubs you know plastic tubs sort of label it up a bit but you know if you've got a manual like i've got here it's no big deal It'll give you all the screw lengths and the sizes. Obviously, I'll probably replace most of the screws. Um, I don't think I've got uh, using hexes on here. No, it all looks like uh, Phillips. Uh, yeah. I, I hear that actually uh, Tammy have just gone over to using uh, hex screws in their kits now. So, uh, you know, it's about time. But, you know, 
as we did back in them times, uh, everything's kind of like got Phillips screws in and that, but it all looks like it's going to come apart quite easy. Uh, it's a fair old weight. Uh, so, yeah, so I better sign out now, guys. Uh, I've got to do another video. But, yeah, uh, I'm off to uh, racing tonight. My boy's doing a bit of mini racing. Um, uh, I'll go and watch him. He's, he's doing really well. Uh, started off the mild day minis, but now it's going to Bat Cave and uh, TRW, all different sort of cars now, and uh, they are really going well. So I'll sign out on this one, and uh, hopefully you'll watch this strip down and then rebuild to something like, well, it's very nice, because uh, it's a beautiful thing. So I'll sign out now, guys, and uh, subscribe or whatever you want to do, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.